Hey my dear data friends, it's Nikola from Data Mozart. In this video I want to show you one very important feature that exists in Power BI and which is called incremental refresh. It is not so important when you are dealing with small data models, but as soon as your data volumes begin to scale, incremental refresh can quickly become your best friend. And in this video I will show you why. Stay tuned! How many times have you bragged about the following? Oh no, I need to refresh my fact table, but it takes so long. Maybe it was happening because you haven't used one of the key performance features when it comes to the data refresh process. Let's try to briefly explain the concept of the incremental refresh. If you think that incremental refresh is something exclusively related to Power BI, you can't be more wrong. This approach has been here for decades and is implemented in basically every traditional data warehousing solution. Incremental refresh is the process of loading new or updated data after the previous data loading cycle. Behind this definition, there are various important aspects to understand. First, why is incremental refresh so important? Well, imagine that you have a huge transactional database, where the main table contains millions of rows. In order to keep your analytic workloads in sync, you need to load the data from that transactional database into the data warehouse. So imagine what would happen if you load the whole giant table each and every time. Exactly, it will consume a lot of resources and may also have an impact on the transactional database. Therefore, you should check and consume only those records that arrived or changed after the last refresh process. This significantly reduces the pressure on the transactional database as only a small chunk of data needs to be handled. Let's say that you synchronized your data yesterday at midnight. Instead of pulling the whole multi-million table again, we will check only the records that were updated or inserted in the meantime, which can be a few thousand rows, and then synchronize only this small portion. What are the benefits of incremental refresh? There are multiple advantages of implementing incremental refresh in your Power BI solution. Refreshes are faster. Obviously, as you operate with a smaller amount of data, the data loading process will run faster. Reduced resources consumption. Again, handling a smaller chunk of data will help you decrease memory consumption and use other Power BI and data source system resources more efficiently. Reliable refresh process. If you decide to go all-in and against incremental refresh, it may happen that long-running connections become vulnerable and non-reliable. Incremental refresh eliminates this challenge. Easy setup. In literally few clicks, you can define incremental refresh policies for your dataset. Let's see how incremental refresh works in Power BI. Once you publish your data model to Power BI service, each table contains one single partition. That partition contains all the rows, which for large table data refresh, as we've already explained, may be overwhelming. When you configure incremental refresh, Power BI will automatically partition your table. One partition will contain data that has to be refreshed frequently, while the other partition will hold rows that are not changing. In the most simplified way, this is how the workflow should look with the incremental refresh in place. As you may notice comparing the previous and current data window, the window is rolling and data that was considered real-time in the previous window now become part of the incremental refreshed partition. This is an ongoing process and is known as a rolling window pattern. To be able to implement an incremental refresh feature in your Power BI solution, some prerequisites need to be in place. Date column. A table to which you want to apply incremental refresh must contain a date column that can be either date time or integer data type. This is because you need to set up parameters for separating the data between partitions. Query folding. We've already learned what is a query folding. Remember, that's the ability of Power Query to generate a single SQL query that will be executed on the SQL data source side. Why does query folding matter for the incremental refresh? 
Well, your date range parameters need to be translated to a where clause in SQL in order to separate data in relevant partitions. Therefore, without query folding, there is no where clause, no partitioning possible, and consequentially no incremental refresh possible. Single data source means all your partitions must query data from a single source. But wait, there is more. By leveraging a hybrid tables feature, you can enhance a data refresh process even more. Essentially, the idea is to set the incremental refresh for the table, but set up the partition with the most recent data in direct query mode while keeping the older data in the partition that uses import mode. This way, you are getting the best of both worlds, blazing fast performance for analytic queries over older data and real-time synchronization with the latest data from the original data source. However, at this moment, the hybrid tables feature is available only with Power BI Premium licenses. To conclude, when you are dealing with relatively small data models, you may sneak without implementing an incremental refresh for your data. However, once the data volumes begin to scale, incremental refresh will quickly become your best friend in optimizing the data refresh process. And it's not only about the time needed for bringing the fresh data into your Power BI datasets, but also the resources needed to reprocess the whole giant tables. I am in the Power BI desktop and, as you may see, I have a nice report page with a table visual on it, showing me the sales amount for every single brand broken down on a continent level. However, this time I am not interested in this part of the solution, as I will focus on setting up the incremental refresh. The first step in the process is to open Power Query Editor. Here, I will choose Manage Parameters from the ribbon on the top and then create a new parameter. When the Manage Parameters dialog window opens, the first thing I need to provide is the parameter name. This is very important as the name that I am going to use is the reserved name for the incremental refresh parameters. So I will type Range Start as the parameter name, choose Date Time as the type and set the current value to the 25th of January 2009. This is because my last date in the dataset is January 28, 2009 and I want my incremental refresh to include the changes from the previous 3 days. I will then create another parameter which will have the name range end. Once again, I will set the type to date time and set the current value to January 28, 2009. Now that my parameters are ready, let's go to the table where we want to configure the incremental refresh. In this case, that's the fact online sales table. Here is my date column of date time data type and I'll now set the filters on this column to include only the last 3 days. So I'll select the date time filters and then choose is after or equal to. Instead of the value, I'll choose parameter option in the middle and then select my range start parameter. After that, let's define where our filter ends. So I'll select is before and then again choose my parameter range end. Once I click OK, the table will be filtered and contain all the rows between January 25th and 27th. Now let's define the incremental refresh policy for our table. I'll click on three dots next to a table name and select incremental refresh. By default, incremental refresh is turned off, so let's toggle it on. There are many different properties to set now. First, we have to define the archive period. I'll choose 3 years here. Next, I must specify the incremental refresh window. I'll set this to 3 days. And the cool thing is that you immediately see which dates will be included in which partition. Under the optional settings, if you tick the box next to the get the latest data in real time with direct query, you can take advantage of the hybrid tables feature that we will describe later in more detail. The remaining options are self explanatory, so I will leave everything as is at the moment. Finally, if you scroll down, you can see your incremental refresh rolling window visualized. Hit apply and now I am ready to publish the report and the dataset. Once the dataset is in the Power BI workspace, you must refresh it. The first refresh will load both historical, 
data for the selected stored period and the new and updated data defined in the incremental refresh policy. This first data loading may take a while depending on the amount of data, but all subsequent refreshes should run much faster, as only the data from the period specified in the incremental refresh policy will be loaded. That's all folks, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new and useful that you can implement in your Power BI solutions. If you like this video, make sure to click this like button down below. And of course, please subscribe to Data Motor channel and stay up to date with all the latest trends and features coming from Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. See you soon!